Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is actually going to be an update to some previous videos I made on um, fitting probability distributions to data uh, using SciPy. So I had originally made this one video um, about how to, uh, how to fit the parameters of probability distributions um, to data using, using the Python SciPy library. Um, I, I made this back in like January and um, this was like the first video I made on this topic and some of the commenters pointed out that the, uh, the, the method I used in the video um, at the time only worked for um, only worked for continuous distributions, not discrete distributions. So um, after people pointed that out, I actually made another video um, showing how to fit the parameters of discrete distributions. Again, using SciPy, although this one, um, SciPy didn't really have like a built-in method, so I had to kind of do it from scratch, like defining a loss function and minimizing a loss function. Um, and yeah, this was back in like April, but actually um, in the time since I made these videos, a new version of SciPy was released, SciPy 1.9. And uh, this update actually includes a, a, a new method of fitting uh, the parameters of probability distributions. And this new method they made um, actually works for both discrete and continuous distributions. And um, yeah, I tried out this method. Um, here's the documentation for it. And I'm really happy with it. I think this is a great method they've come up with. Um, it makes things a lot easier both to do the fitting, again, for both continuous and discrete distributions. It makes the fitting a lot easier and it also includes Includes, um, includes a new way to visualize the fit, which also makes the uh, visualization a lot easier. So this video is going to be an updated version um, going over this new method included in uh, SciPy 1.9. Oh, also, I just want to give credit to, to the uh, commenter on, on my video who, who pointed this out, uh, Miss Miss Raining Days. She's the one who pointed out um, who pointed out that th this new method is included in uh, the in the SciPy um, 1.9 update. So yeah, credit to her for that. But yeah, so this video is just going to be showing you guys how to use um, this new method in SciPy 1.9 uh, to do the fitting. The previous methods I showed you guys in my previous videos still work. So you guys can still use these methods. Actually, I think the one in, in the discrete video, I think this one's useful because this one is showing like how to do it from scratch, like writing your own loss function and then minimizing it so i think these videos can still be possibly useful but yeah this this new video is just going to be showing you guys um how to use this new uh this new method to do it in an easier way okay so let's get started so the first thing you need to do is actually um if you don't have the updated version of of scipy you have to update to scipy um 1.9 um at least so this might be different depending on like what your setup is, but if you're using pip3 and you have a Mac or um, Linux, then you should be able to just update using using this in the command line, um, sudo pip3 install um, upgrade scipy. That should get you the most recent version of scipy and then you should be good um, to do everything I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, it might be a little bit different if you're using like Windows or some other package manager besides um, PIP3. But yeah, for me at least, this is what I was able to use to um, to upgrade uh, my version of Sci-Fi. Um, okay, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to be using the same um, the same like fake data sets that I used in my previous videos. So the first one, I just made up this fake data set of um, diner quality. So I kind of said as, as an example, I think diner restaurants kind of have um, this type of like bell curve shaped distribution of their quality. I think some of them are good and some of them are bad, but a lot of them are kind of in the middle. Um, yeah, so I just made up this fake data set and uh, you guys can probably see it looks kind of like a normal distribution. So we're going to see if we can fit a normal distribution to this data. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to do the fit. And then after we fit the parameters of normal distribution, I'm going to show you guys um, what parameters I actually use to make up this fake data set. And we're going to see if our um, fit parameters come close to the actual true uh, parameters that I used. Um, and also, I, I have the, the data in um, CSV format here. So even though I called it CSV, there's really there's really only one column of data, so there's no actual commas. But yeah, each one of these um, each one of these rows of data is like the um, quality score for some diner restaurant. And again, I just I just made this um, 
I just made this data set up just for an example. But okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just um, read in the CSV data and try to plot it and make sure we can like get it in okay and it looks good. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy here and just copy and paste in the code to read the CSV. Um, yeah, if you guys have been watching my videos, hopefully you kind of know how to read in a CSV file, but, but if not, this is just the code to do it. We just define an empty list that we call data and then with open um, uh, the location of our CSV file, S file, um, we define the CSV reader, the delimiter is a comma, even though we only have one column of data, so there, there's no actual commas in here. Um, it's good to just, as a habit, make the delimiter a comma in case, for example, we had more than one uh, column of data. And then for row in reader, uh, data.append um, the, uh, the first element of the row index zero and we have to make sure we cast it to a float because if we just read it in without casting it'll be read in as a string so we have to cast um all of these data points to floats so that they won't just be read in as strings um okay so that's how we uh fill up our um data list we read in all of these data points and then what we want to do next is um plot the data to make sure it looks okay Again, going to be a little bit lazy, uh, copy and paste in some code here. We're just using the plt.hist function, um, and then we uh, pass in our data list. The bins can be whatever. I'm making the bins 100. Um, you guys can make it whatever you want. And then density equals true, so that we're getting um, we're getting a probability density function. Yeah, and then plt.show. So let's just um, read this in uh, and then plot it and just make sure we can um, like get the data okay. So yeah, let's just uh, try running this and just see how it looks. Um, okay, it looks good. So we've successfully um, read in our data and uh, yeah, it looks like how it's supposed to look. Uh, maybe we'll just get some of this clutter out of the way here. But yeah, we read in our data, um, it looks good. So yeah, now let's do the actual um, parameter fitting and, and, see how, um, and see how it works. Uh, okay, so let's just, yeah, maybe we'll just take a look at the documentation to show you guys. So the documentation is like this, scipy.stats.fit. Then you pass in um, the distribution, uh, the data, and uh, you need to pass in bounds too. I know it's kind of, here it kind of makes it look like bounds is an optional parameter, but um, I'm going to show you guys, you actually do need to pass in some bounds, otherwise you, you won't get the right answer. Um, okay, so let's just uh, let's just give this a try. So the first thing we need to do is just define um, define what the distribution is um, in terms of the uh, scipy scipy dot stats like distribution object that we're working with. So the dist in this case is going to be um, dist equals scipy dot stats dot norm, and um, for whatever for whatever distribution you're working with, um, if you need to find out the syntax for the scipy.stats object for that distribution, I would recommend just Googling it. Um, scipy scipy is good documentation. So if you just um, let's say you're, you're using like um, I don't know like an exponential distribution or something, just Google like scipy.stats exponential distribution, and it'll show you like what to actually put for this line here in order to reference um, the scipy.stats object for uh, the distribution. But yeah, for this one, um, we're using a normal distribution, so it's just dist equals scipy.stats.norm. Um, okay, so the next thing is we need some bounds. And the, the way we pass in the bounds is gonna look like this, basically. So for each, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a list, but for each parameter, we need to pass in um, a tuple, uh, a tuple with the actual bounds for that parameter. Um, and in order to see like what the like what the parameters are, um, again, just look up the documentation for the scipy.stats object for the distribution. But for the normal distribution, um, as you guys can probably guess, we need a uh, parameter for the mean and a parameter for the um, standard deviation. But yeah, we can confirm that just by Googling and um, and just and just looking at what parameters it actually uh, takes. Yes, yeah, it has one parameter for the mean and one for the standard deviation. Um, okay, so let's let's make the bounds pretty wide because we don't want to like cheat here and just 
and just give it the right answer. So let's make the bound, the bounds like pretty wide. I'm actually going to make it like like uh, for the mean, I'll say negative 100 um, to 100. And then for the standard deviation bounds, I'll also say negative 100 um, to 100. And um, yeah, we'll just we'll just see if I can still get the right answer even um, with with these like pretty wide bounds. Um, okay, and the next part is to actually do the fit. And the syntax for this is very easy. Um, yeah, the, again, I'm like very happy with this new method they included. Um, they make it like very easy to do the parameter fitting now. So I think this is uh, this is a very good update that, that they made. So it's just um, just for convention, I'll, I'll just call the result res here. Um, and then scipy.stats.fit. And then uh, the distribution the data, and then the bounds. Um, but first, let's just let's just see what happens if we don't pass in any bounds. Just to show you guys that we actually do need um, to pass in the bounds parameter. Let's just let's just see what this uh, gives us. Oh, sorry. Actually, um, yeah, I forgot to <laughs> embarrassing. Forgot to print the result here. Yeah. Yeah, so without any bounds parameter, it just doesn't work. It just gives us like the default parameters. So um, if, we, if we don't pass in any bounds, it just gives us like the mean of uh, zero and the standard deviation of one. And we know that's that's not correct. I mean, we can tell just visually that's that's not what the answer is. So it like without passing in bounds, it just returns the default parameters. So I don't know if this is possibly some like um, bug in uh, in the SciPy um, like function. But yeah, it, even though it, even though it makes it seem like the bounds are an optional parameter, you do actually have to pass in the bounds. Otherwise, it's just going to give you the default um, parameters. So it won't actually work. But yes, let's just try it again. Um, this time, passing in the bounds. Uh, okay, and now it actually works. Now we actually get an answer. So for um, for the the mean parameter, it's it's fit to about ten, like nine point nine nine six, um, about ten, and the standard deviation parameter um, called scale here is about three, um, two point nine nine seven. So it's about ten for the mean and about three for the standard deviation. Um, we can see visually that like kind of looks like it it could be it could be plausible at least. But then next, let's actually visualize this fit. And this is another thing I'm very happy with for this SciPy um, update. They make it like very easy to visualize um, visualize your results for the parameter fitting. So all you have to do to um, visualize the fit parameters um, relative to your data is just say res dot plot and that's going to plot the results um by the way make sure you import uh matplotlib dot pi plot because you need that to do to do this part but yeah just for the visualizing it's just res dot plot and then plt dot show yeah they make it super easy to do the visualization so um i'm very happy with uh with this new um functionality but yeah let's just actually see how our um how our fit parameters look yeah, and here's our fit. So, so you guys can see it like automatically plotted our data as well as the um, the uh, normal distribution with our fit parameters. And we can see that yeah, it does look like a pretty good fit. Um, that's that's kind of on purpose because I, I purposely made this um, example data like easy to fit to. Um, in real life, it might be not this nice of a fit. It might be more a um, little bit more messy. But yeah, for this example, I, I purposely made something like easy to fit to. But yeah, we, we were able to like easily um, easily find the uh, parameters and then like see, confirm visually that they do um, look like a nice fit. Um, but now for the moment of truth, let's actually look at the um, code I used to generate this fake data set and let's see what parameters I actually used to generate it. So here's the file I actually used um, to generate the fake data. And to generate the data, I used a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of three. So again, that's like very, very close to what we actually got um, for our fit parameters. Oh, and you guys can see if you, if you run it different times, you get slightly different answers for the fit. 
Um, so the second time we ran it, we actually got um, a little bit over 10 and a little bit over 3. First time, it was a little bit under 10 and a little bit under 3. But um, both times, yeah, pretty close to the true results. Um, I mean, yeah, the true parameters of a mean of 10 and a standard de deviation of 3. Um, so yeah, that, that was our continuous um, distribution example. We can see that the uh, fitting actually did work pretty well. Um, yeah, let's try this again um, with a uh, discrete distribution and see if we can fit a uh, discrete distribution to some data. So I'm going to comment all of this out and then I'm going to show you guys, um, again, this will be the same like fake data set that I used in my um, previous video. So in my previous video for the uh, discrete distribution, I used a fake data set of the number of customers that a restaurant is getting per day. And yeah, so this is something that could be fit with a Poisson distribution. Um, but yeah, so let's see if we can fit this data set um, using the same SciPy method now. We'll kind of do the same thing as before. I'm actually just going to copy and paste a lot of this. So we're going to start um, doing the same thing, just trying to um, read in the data and see if we can uh, plot it and make sure it looks okay. So yeah, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this code, except I'll make it um, customers per day. That's our, uh, again, CSV, kind of in the same format, except this time we have counts of the number of customers. Um, so let's just read this in first and just make sure we can plot it and it looks okay. Again, just copy and pasting this code and just changing um, the name of the CSV file we're reading in. So yeah, let's just see if we can uh, read in this data and um, plot it and just make sure we uh, can read it in okay. Oh, whoops, actually, sorry, there's, there's one thing I need to change here. So, um, so I'm actually gonna do the binning a little bit differently. In this case, we want the bins to be, um, I mean, you guys can, again, like you can make it whatever you want, but I think it'll look better if we do the bins like this. We're basically just gonna make the bins um, the maximum the maximum count we have so that we have one bin for every number of customers that was observed i think that just for for a discrete distribution i think it just makes more sense to do the binning like this but you guys could just keep it like 100 bins and you'll still get um i mean it won't necessarily be wrong it'll just be i don't think it makes as, as much sense to do it that way but yeah let's just see uh how this looks uh yeah so we were able to read it in and plot it okay um, yeah, data looks okay. So let's just see now if we can use the same method um, to do the uh, parameter estimation for the discrete distribution. Um, yeah, it's just I'm actually just going to copy and paste and see if we can do like um, use almost exactly the same code. Um, the only thing that I think I probably am going to need to change is. Um, well, of course, the distribution has to be different. We need to make this now a Poisson distribution. And then we also need to change the bounds because in this case, the Poisson distribution only has one parameter because for a Poisson distribution, the mean um, is actually the same as the variance. So instead of having two different parameters for the mean and um, like standard deviation or something, we actually only have one parameter. But yeah, other than that, I'm just gonna like leave the bounds the same. I wanna make it... Um, I don't want to make it too easy. I just want to show you guys that even with like pretty wide bounds, it'll still work and come up with the right answer. So um, yeah, I'll just I'll just start uh, just like trying to um, print out what the answer is, and we'll take a look at that, and then we'll um, and then we'll visualize the uh, fit. Um, okay, so let's try it out. Yeah, so it, for the Poisson distribution, the the one parameter it takes is called mu. That's the parameter for both the mean and the variance. And in this case, the, the fit is predicting a, a mu of about um, 4.968, really about five here. Yeah, if we look at if we look at the data, that that looks like it could be it could be plausible. But yeah, let's let's now visualize and um, and actually see how the fit looks. And yeah, it looks like um, a good fit. Yeah, you guys can see this This is plotted um, the histogram of our actual data as well as the uh, the probability mass function of the, the fit distribution with the fit parameter. 
Um, yeah, it looks like a pretty close fit. But yeah, so now for the moment of truth, let's actually like take a look at what parameter I used to generate this um, fake data for the discrete distribution. As you guys probably guessed, like I used the uh, parameter mu equals five. Um, so yeah, our, our fit um, parameter actually did like basically get it right. Also, just like fun fact for you guys, um, with a Poisson distribution, there's actually an even easier way than this to fit the uh, parameter because the only parameter for a Poisson distribution is the mean. You guys can fit the distribution like even easier than this. Like all you have to do is actually take the mean of the, um, of the data set. So even instead of doing all this stuff, we could have done something like even easier. We could have just said um, print np dot mean of um, the data. Because again, like the variance and the uh, mean are the same for the Poisson distribution. So all you have to do to, to fit this one parameter is just take the mean of your data. Um, and yeah, that, that gives us, um, again, this fit mean parameter, which is also the fit variance parameter. So that's that's actually like the like easiest possible way to do a Poisson distribution. But I kind of showed you guys how to do it this way because um, I'm just kind of doing an example here. I'll just sort of comment this like easy way. But yeah, I want to show you guys how to use the actual um, SciPy method in case you're using some other um, discrete distribution like a uh, like a binomial distribution or, or something like that. Um, so it's good to sort of know how to do um, the actual SciPy uh, like fitting function to be able to basically fit the parameters for any distribution that you're working with um, using the same uh, syntax. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys in this video. Um, like usual, I'm going to put all of all of this stuff up on my GitHub if you guys want to uh, download these data sets and try it yourself. Um, it'll all be on my GitHub. I'll, I'll link to the GitHub in the uh, description. Yeah, uh, that's all I have for you guys for today. Um, thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next time.